Whether you're brand new to Halo PSA or have been in the platform for years, here's 10 settings that I think you want to make sure you enable or at least be aware of. So in no particular order, let's jump straight into it. Number one, did you know in Halo PSA you can impersonate both your agents and your users? What do I mean by that? Well, if I go to a user to start with, and let me just pick here Mr. Tim Bowers himself from Halo PSA, what I can do is I can impersonate him and then go to the self-service portal so I can see what he can see when he goes to the portal. I can also enable a setting, so when I go to configuration in the bottom left, teams and agents and agents, and just pick on Robbie, I can impersonate the agent so I can see what they can see in the platform. Particularly useful if you're doing any modifications to permissions or roles or anything like that. To enable this, if you don't have these buttons already, you go to config in the bottom left, you go down to advanced settings, and you find the one that says impersonate agents or impersonate users and you can press a tick for these. Now you do have to be an admin to be able to do this and this is under the section security in config advanced settings. Number two, did you know you could enable a setting so when you're in a ticket you can see other open tickets for the customer, for the site or for the user that the tickets log in against? If you didn't, you go to the ticket type, you press edit in the top left you go to settings, related activity, and you can show other open tickets for the user, for the site, or from the customer. Again, super helpful when you're doing a ticket. You might as well have a quick glance and see what other tickets that customer has open. And if they have more than one of the same type, you might make that into a problem or escalate that to leadership so they can look at it as an overview of all the problems that client may have with the same thing. Number three, anyone new in Halo, this will seem a bit mental that this wasn't always here, but if I just move my screen so we can see the top very quickly, you will see that in the top I have these breadcrumbs and it lets me know where in Halo I am on each tab. So I'm in the ready for invoicing section over here, I'm on ticket 1467 over here, etc, etc. This didn't always used to be here. To enable this, if it's not on for you, you go to config, advanced settings, and then down here we have browser tab rename and I recommend everyone turns this on to rename tabs based on breadcrumbs. Number four, keeping in advanced settings, did you know you can enable config change tracking? If we scroll further down this page, you will see there is a checkbox that says enable config change tracking. If you don't have this checked, check it right now. What this allows you to do is a couple of things really. The first thing is, and what I use it for, is to tell my partners that they broke Halo and not us. This lets you, lets you see everything in Halo that someone has changed. So they've enabled a thing, they've deleted a thing, they've changed the setting on, and I think this is really valuable just to see what's been done in the environment. So I can see that, you know, here, Robbie deleted a notification for new ticket locked. I can click on it and I can see what notification he deleted. And unfortunately, you can't roll back notifications, so there's no rollback feature. However, in certain settings, you will find there is a rollback before this change, and please be careful and, and understand what you're doing there. But you can roll back the change, so you can re-enable or return on the thing that was once disabled. And the difference is going to be changing the workflow preview type from one to three. Number five, did you know you can change the way that this side menu looks? And did you also know you can change the way that this looks when you click on a customer? If you didn't know that, go to configuration, go down to advanced settings once more time, once more time, one more time, go down to uh, layout profiles, so screen layouts, and in here you will find screen layout profiles. Click on that and you will see the entity customer, which you can also change the navigation. If you start with customer and make a new one and go to the tab layout, a couple of the things that I like to always do is go to the details tab and pin this to sidebar one. Go to sites and users and move this up the list a little bit. And also find billing, which will be all the way down in this list and move it to the top. What that means is when you go to your customers tab, you will see the details is pinned to the right hand side 
and billing is the first thing that you come to and sites and users is again within reach. You can also hide things in this menu. So if you never really use CRM notes, you can, you know, remove this out of view to make this less noisy. And what you can also do is change the navigation menu on the left. So if you go to configuration again and go back and modify the navigation menu and go to button layout, you can again reorganize this list or you can even allow things to show in an overflow menu, which will mean you'll have three dots appear and then you can put things out of sight, out of mind. So they're there if you need them, but not a daily occurrence. So we're reducing the noise once more. Number six, awaiting review. Did you know in invoicing, you can enable the awaiting review tab. Now a contentious point is awaiting review because we shouldn't need to do it in Halo PSA if we have billing set up correctly. However, this does enable you to do a couple of things. And I always say with every partner we work with, at least for the first few months, let's have this enabled so we can make our billing review a little bit easier because it might not be fully dialed in for go live. So in here, we can evaluate all the actions on tickets that were no charge. We can see things that have, you know, hours to invoice. So do we actually want to invoice this ticket two hours? If you don't, we can select them and say, do not bill, or we can review it and then we can go in and invoice it from ready to invoicing. To enable this, go to configuration, go to billing, go to general settings, go to charge type settings and enable the ticket review processing. Something that I think is really beneficial for at least new builds for the first few months. And if you do enjoy the process, then you can leave it enabled forever. Number seven, did you know you can treat forwarded emails from agents as end user emails to create tickets? What do I mean by this? Well, we all have this scenario as a business owner or head of a service where end users will email you directly to get a faster resolution time of a problem. The reality is, though, is they actually get a slower resolution time because we're not the ones fixing the problems half the time and we're not in our mailbox 24 seven. So if Dave from a local building company emails you and goes, Connor, I can't print. What you want to be able to do is forward that into your help desk, but you want it to make the ticket as Dave rather than yourself. So if we go to configuration, click on email, we can enable the checkbox, treat forwarded emails from agents as end user emails. This will then instantly make a ticket for Dave as Dave and your team can work it. What it allows you to then do is email your client back and go, hey Dave, no bother at all. I forwarded that to our help desk. Someone from the team will be with you as soon as possible. Just a slight reminder for faster resolution times, email the support desk rather than emailing me directly because you'll get a better response rate and resolution time. As opposed to saying, hi Dave, email the desk, I'm not gonna fix your problem. Number eight, did you know in Halo PSA on a ticket, you can enable many tabs actually. So you can show a billing tab, you can show an automations tab, you can show an event log tab, you can show an audit log tab. So you can understand what's happening with your ticket, where things are going and why they're going there. To enable these, there's a few places. The first one is in ticket type and you want to go to the forms tab. They keep moving things over. You can enable in here the agent ticket details form. So you can show the billing tab within here. You can show the automations tab. You can even show an auditing tab, which means on a ticket, you can click on a ticket and click the audit log. And you can see all the things that happened on the ticket by who and when and what was changed. You can even enable an event log tab. So this shows you all notifications in the system, what's triggering and when it's triggering and what it's doing. To enable this one, you go to configurations, you go to notifications, you go to general settings. At the very bottom, you can enable show an event log tab on the tickets. Number nine, if you're cool like me, you can enable chevrons on tickets and you can even show a date as to when it started this step in the workflow or when it ended this stage in the workflow. Sorry, Connor, you should be better with terminology. So how do you enable these call Chevron view? Well, we go to configuration, we go to tickets, we go to general settings, and we can click on workflow progress visual, and we can change it from the default view, which looks something like this with these ugly dots, and we can enable it workflow visual. Here we go, I'm on it. And you can change it to Chevron view. What you can then control is the workflow progress display type, and you can show the workflow stage as either start dates or end dates. So if you're on a ticket and you're here and I triage this ticket, it will show you underneath it that 11.04 AM, 
I started the service desk stage in this workflow. So you can always look back and easily report and display how long it took to go from triage to service desk. So in this case, it took us, what, three days? Awful, awful triage time. Number 10, currently in my Halo build, when I go to a new ticket, it's quite boring and there's a lot of noise going on here. What you can actually do is open this in a modal window, which focuses you in and makes you focused on what it is you're doing. To do this, you want to go to config tickets, general settings, and you want to scroll all the way down to new ticket screen display mode, and you can change this to a modal window. What this now means is when you go to service desk and click a new ticket, it will open up in a modal, so you're kind of locked into what it is you're doing. You're not going to get distracted by notifications popping up or new tickets coming in and where you go. What you can also do is enable that for actions. So one of the things that I like to do is on the action create appointment is you can change the default this, and I can't remember exactly what the settings called, but we will find it together. New action screen display mode, and we can enable this to open in a modal window, and we can select what size it is. This means on a ticket, when we go over here, if you have the create appointment action on a ticket, when you press it, you can open it in a full screen window so you can easily navigate to what you need to do. I think that is a stark contrast to what it's like usually, which if I go back to the actions create appointment, we go down to the visual, which is here, which is a stark contrast to opening it up in this side window which isn't always the easiest to use, especially if you're zoomed out at 100%. This can be quite small and quite distracting. So there you go. There's 10 things in Halo PSA that I think you should at least be aware of, if not enable and use in your daily build. I've been Connor Fagan. We're in Ada Solutions. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you all soon.